You see, God gives us a way to live a good life where we can love life. And it starts with being filtered by the Holy Spirit as he changes us. Verse 11, he says, Let him turn away from evil and do what is good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Jesus said to the people who were poor and struggling and needing hope, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Let me share with you the difference in the Christian world of what I see of the difference between a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. Some of you, just by nature, you're a peacekeeper. You don't want to deal with stuff. You'll avoid confrontation at all costs. You just want to keep sweeping it under the rug. And you think, if I just sweep it under the rug long enough, or if I ignore it long enough, what will happen? I hope it will what? Just go away, right? And it doesn't. It begins to fester in different ways and greater ways. But a peacemaker is somebody that deals with the problem in the right way and seeks peace with grace and truth. Isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus wasn't a peacekeeper where, you know, oh, man, you guys have really messed up for thousands of years. Hope it works out for you. Man, if Jesus had that mentality, we'd all be dead and going to hell. But Jesus is the peacemaker because he came and dealt with the problem of sin. He died on the cross to be the final sacrifice. His perfect obedience in life made him righteous and right to be that death sacrifice. I don't know if you ever thought about that. But his perfect life is actually what gave him uh, the quality and the ability to die for us because he was perfect. He lived and lived out the law in perfection, unlike you and I. And so he made peace. He made peace for you and me so we could be forgiven of our sins, restored with God, and even restored with one another. That's why the church can live in unity, because we've been forgiven. So are you a peacemaker in your life? I'm not trying to seek out every confrontation and every disagreement. That's not what I mean. But when there's a problem in your family, when there's a problem in the church, are you lovingly saying, God, I want your Holy Spirit to give me wisdom because I want to turn away from evil. I want to do what is good. I want to seek peace because you're never going to get peace if you just keep ignoring it. Whatever the problem is, it's going to be disaster. It's going to be chaos. And that's where many of us have been in our life. So we need to seek peace and pursue it. This does not mean peace at any price. Because righteousness is always the basis for peace. It's kind of like when we talk about love, what the world says love is versus what God says love is. Love is always based in truth. If I'm not speaking truth to you in a situation, then I don't love you. If I'm just saying, oh, it's okay, it's no big deal, man, I'm not, I'm not loving you. We've got to speak truth as a basis for love. And righteousness must always be the basis for peace or it's not true peace. It simply means that a Christian exercises moderation when they relate to people. You're not trying to create problems. You're not just trying to have your own way. But if it be possible with you, as much as it's possible with you, Romans 12, 18 says, live, be at peace with all men. We know sometimes it's not possible. Romans 14, 19 talks about that. But we should work to seek peace and pursue it. It does not come automatically. So he's telling us here that we need to turn, we need to do, we need to seek, we need to pursue peace.